Now we're going to do outfield part two, where we'll give you some of our best value, our sleepers, um, worst value, obviously Vinny's prospects report. And then ultimately we'll give you the overall top 15 outfielders in major league baseball this year for fantasy baseball purposes. And we will start with the best value and we'll start with Vince, your best value in the outfield. Um, so my first best value feels like a little bit of a steal. I'm going to start with Henry Davis. He, if I, if I filter the drafts from October till now, he was going at about pick 300, but if I filter since February 1st, he's going about 250, 245, 250. So his price has definitely shot up over the last two or three months or so. And rightly so. If you've watched, I don't know, Rami, if you've caught any of his spring training stuff, but he yeah, looks all like the time. a man possessed no, I'm kidding. the spring training. Um, okay. Just in 15 at-bats, he's got three home runs, and they are mammoth home runs. The guy has some massive power. Um, just some of the um, minor league numbers from last year. He had the highest WRC plus in the minor leagues last year for anyone 23 or younger, and he put okay. up a 1,015 1, OPS um, 12 homers in 55 games between double and triple A. He's got good exit velocities. He's got good um, launch angles and his MLB samples. So everything kind of transferred when he had a little small MLB sample last year. But the reason that why he's so low is because his surface numbers last year were not great. And so that's why I love buying a guy like this. Surface numbers didn't line up with the underlying stuff. I think he's poised for a huge year. You got to get him though soon because I think as he continues to just break out in spring training, his price is only going to go up. I wouldn't be surprised if it broke about 200 pretty soon here um, because of the bigger thing. And this is why I think it might even get above 200 is he's going to be used as a catcher. So gaining catcher eligibility. I mean, he's in the outfield now. That's the only way you can draft him, but gaining catcher eligibility after two, three weeks of the season is going to be a huge boost for his value. So I love Henry Davis at 250. I probably even love him at, love him at about 200. So get as much Henry Davis as you can. And we've seen this all the time where guys in spring training, their value will boost up. And it's a weird thing because you want to draft late enough where you're close enough to the start of the season. You don't want to start too early, but you also want to draft, you know, early enough that maybe some of these steel guys, if you're one of those people who's looking at steals and then, you know, their buzz is starting to grow around them. It's like, oh man, I better draft soon so that I get some of these guys before the buzz grows too much. My first best value play um, is Brandon Nimmo. I think... He had a like a really good year last year and sneaky good power. You don't think of him as a power hitter. I think he had 26 home runs last year for the Mets. Um, and I think the lineup overall will be better this year for the Mets. And getting him at 160, where he's not one of those top outfielders that we talked about on last episode, he's a step below all those guys. I think that could ultimately be a steal for you. We've talked, we talked about this. If you missed the end of the last episode, and really, if you missed the last, the end of the last episode, this is a part two. You should really go back and listen to last episode first. Um, but the end of the last episode, one of the things we mentioned was that you're going to have guys who are specifically outfielders who are at picks 300 and, and in, in that range, you know, because you need so many outfielders. So you're going to have a lot of outfielders that are taken later in the draft. This is a guy who you don't have to use one of those first, five rounds on and you could still get him at a really, really good price um, and get some really good value out of him from the outfield position. I think Brandon Nemo is going to have a big year. Yeah. Good call out. I mean, the last two seasons, he's at 274 in each of them. Um, he did have 24 home runs last year. I think 20 is probably a safer projection, but 20 home runs and you could pencil him for 90 runs, right? I mean, hitting at the top of a, yep. a pretty good Mets lineup. He's played in 151 and 152 games the last two years. I mean, yeah, I think that's a great call for Brandon. Nimmo. Yeah. And I, he's freaking nerd when he runs down to first base like that after a walk, but still, I, you know, can't Gotta fault him for hustle. that. No. Yeah. Love yeah it. You're you're it's a walk. The one time he pulls a hammy on that is going to be so funny. All right. Who's your other uh, best value play here? So yeah, my other best value. Um, I've been getting this guy in so many drafts, um, but I'm, you know, typically when you, well, you're telling guy, me before our draft, so I don't know. Well, and this is, I almost hope somebody else takes him because the amount of times I've drafted him almost feels like, like, it feels like I'm doing something wrong, but every time I look, I just, I don't think I am because I love Parker Meadows at pick 290. He, I mean, 290 is just ridiculous. Like that's where you're hmm. starting to take your flyers, but he has a fan fantasy friendly skill set. Say that five times fast. Um, and that comes with his power. He's got 
uh, about 90 mile an hour average exit velocity, which is pretty good. And his launch angle of 18%, which was phenomenal last year. He walks at a high clip. He walked um, 11% last season in the MLB, which he didn't even have a great MLB debut, but the fact that he's walking at such a good clip, he was able to post high exit velocities. He had a good launch angle. All of those things tell me that there's more in the tank for Parker Meadows. Um, another thing that I like about him is he has a good glove, which, you know, doesn't really help fantasy, but the reason why it does keep him in the lineup to talk about is it keeps him in the lineup. He's got major ROI upside. So at pick 290, there's not a whole lot of risk at this point in the draft. It's just way too cheap. I am all in on him. The only downside would be the park. I mean, it's, it's one of the worst hitters park in all of baseball, but mm -hmm. I, I'm not too worried about it. I think he's still penciling in for 20 home runs and he's going to get some steals and talking about a good average. I think Parker Meadows is a steal at 290. Yeah. And this just confirms your Midwest bias with Parker Meadows and Henry Davis, both playing in the central divisions uh, and Pittsburgh and Detroit. Right. Um, so that yeah, definitely, and my, mm -hmm. and my worst value is an East coast team. So yeah. I'm not shocked. Uh, yeah. my, uh, my best value, my other best value. And it's funny. And I like that we did this. We didn't coordinate this, but you went more and I told you to do this. I just didn't take my own advice. Uh, go, you went like more back half of the outfielders mm -hmm. where you can get value. Cause as we talked about, again, I'll just reiterate it. We're going, you're going to need to find value down there. Cause you're going to have to take outfielders at that part of the draft. Um, same goes with starting pitchers. When we get there, you know, you're going to have to take pat starting pitchers in that part of the draft. So we'll talk about that. Um, but for me, I went more guys that you don't, have to waste a, one of the first few round picks on but could get you almost as good value as the first round picks and it's a guy we talked about again on, again on last episode and that's teoscar hernandez he's going i think at around like 120 which is a little high um but i think that's good value still for what you're going to get for him uh he should be one of the premier outfielders and we'll get to our top 15 a little bit later he could definitely play in the range of the back half of those top 15 um, when you look at some of those guys like Randy or Rosarina and Adolis Garcia, he could definitely play with those guys. And if you're getting him, I don't know, 10, 20 picks later, steal a round or two later, that's pretty great value in my opinion. Yeah, I see him at 128 versus a Rosarina is at 45. So yeah, that's insane. Huge price difference. I think yeah. that's a good call out. Um, he's going to play every day, right? And yeah, I think you know, good power. The only thing I would question is maybe if the hit tool isn't there, we could see some concerns. I mean, he struck out at 31% rate last year. We'd like to see that a little bit lower, but couldn't have landed in a better organization, right? I mean, great, great spot for him. I think that's a, a good call out, Rami. Um, yeah, I so, agree. 